strength to sin by his provocation wherewith he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Look at verse 34. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And he walked in the way of Jeroboam and in his sin. Wherewith he made Israel to sin. And you see that he did it in chapter 12. Here we are in chapter 15. He's still on. And this thing matters for eternity. That's why you want to consider your action. You want to consider your ministry. You want to consider your service and your labor. What are you doing? Will this give you a reward in eternity? Or is this going to satisfy yourself now? Manipulate now? Maneuver now? And then for all eternity you are suffering for that. Be wise. And count your days. It's not only also are getting old or gray hairs that die. Younger people die too. And you want to prepare for eternity before the time comes. I'm looking at chapter 16, verse 25. Chapter 16, verse 25, Jeroboam. But Omri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord, and did worse than all that were before him. For he walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin. To provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger for their vanities. You see that again? It goes on and on. I'm looking at chapter 22, verse 52. As we come to the end of the first kings, it's so repeated. This Jeroboam, Jeroboam, Jeroboam. He did something that condemned him for all eternity. We're looking at verse 52 of the last chapter of first kings. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And he walked in the way of his father, and in the way of his mother, and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. Looks like that's the only record you have about Jeroboam, his manipulation, his maneuvering. And made the whole nation to sin. Made multitudes of people to sin. In fact, he even affected good people. You think about that, the people that normally, the good people, nice people, loving people, righteous people. This Jeroboam, even after Jeroboam died, he left a legacy of sinning. A legacy of evil. A legacy of bad, corrupting, defiling influence. Look at Second Kings chapter 10. Second Kings chapter 10. I'm reading from verses 10 and 11. No, now that there shall fall upon the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord has done that which is spake by the hand of Elijah. So Jehu slew all, the, all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel. And all his great men, and his king's folks, and his priests, until he left him none remaining. The prophecy of Elijah concerning the house of, of um, Ahab. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jeho Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he saluted him, and said unto him, it is thine heart right, as my heart is with thine heart. And Jehonadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand. And he took him up to him into the chariot. And he said, Is Jehu talking to Jehonadab? Uh, Jehonadab? And he said, Come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. This man was zealous for the Lord. And as I wiped out Baal worship from the land of Israel. But look at what happened. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made what? Israel to sin. Look at where we're coming from. From 1 Kings chapter 12. Where he did the maneuvering, the manipulation. And he caused Israel to sin. And then affected bad people, good people also. And now this Jew that had the zeal of the Lord. Wanting to do something great and he did. And he wiped out Baal worship. But as good as righteous as the man was. He never could get off from the sin of Jeroboam. Think about your action. If an action is sinful, there's some innocent people that they don't know left from right. 
They are innocent, but they are ignorant. They are not wise. And they just look at what you do, or they think that's the right thing to do. And then you contact them and say, this is what you are doing. And maybe you, you, he thinks you are rejoicing in that. He thinks that that thing will make you more righteous and more rapturable. And he picks it up and he does the same thing. And he doesn't know his manipulation and maneuvering. And then eventually it's to your record that he sinned by himself and he made others to sin. He made bad people to sin, to sin more. And he made good people to sin. That's why you need to consider the matters that you act out and the things that you do are they the things that make others righteous or are they the things that condemn for all eternity and we're looking at uh, matthew chapter 23 matters that condemn for all eternity matthew chapter 23 it says in matthew 23 13 woe but won't you scratch some pharisees hypocrites for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses, and for ye pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Look at verse 15 now. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye compass see and learn to make one disciple, one proselyte, one follower, one adherent, one adamant fellow, one servant that follows your way and he doesn't look any other direction. He thinks you are leading him right because you sway, you labor, you go up and down and you go see, over sea and over land to make one proselyte and then it says and when he's made, he's made he, you make him twice twofold more the child of hell than yourselves the impact and the result of what people do and it says all this labor all this service all this activity going up and down they did that and make the people that followed them twice a uh, twofold times uh, uh, children of hell than themselves look at verse 33 ye serpents and ye generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell that means that they did things that will condemn them for all eternity. Jeremiah, I'm looking at chapter 23. Jeremiah 23. And we're reading from verse 17. Jeremiah 23, verse 17. Actions that condemn for all eternity. Labors that condemn for all eternity. A kind of service, activity, going up and down, that condemns for all eternity. It's a kind of evangelism. You know some people that try to do evangelism. Paul, the apostle, spoke about them. And he said, they preach. But it's not for the glory of God. And it's not for the exaltation of the kingdom. They preach, thinking to add affliction to my bones. And he's saying that by doing that, they make Paul, the apostle, suffer more. And he said, they're preaching gospel of confusion and contention. And he said, but I thank God there are other people that are preaching the gospel of peace and the gospel of grace and the gospel of love and the gospel of salvation and the gospel of life eternal. And he says, do what is right and say what is right and preach what brings people into the kingdom. Preach the word. Don't preach conflict, confusion, fighting, struggling, striving. Preach the word. You don't know how much time you have left. And give a legacy to the people that are following. So that they will do things that count for eternity. Things commendable for eternity. Not things that condemn for eternity. We're looking at this Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 17. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, Ye shall have peace. And they say to everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. They encourage sinners to keep on sinning. They encourage backsliders to remain in backsliding. They encourage scorners to keep on scorning. They encourage scoffers to keep on scoffing. And they encourage people that do not love the Lord to continue in their evil way. 
the matters that condemn for all eternity. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, the anger of the Lord shall not return until he has executed, until he has performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, he shall consider it. You know what you do today? The time will pass, the day will pass, the months will pass, the year will pass, but how about the latter days? I about when there will be no time to make any correction. Look at verse 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. That's the ministry that comes for eternity. Turn people from the evil way. In our ushering, turn people away from their evil. In our singing, turn people away from their evil. In our preaching, in our answering questions, turn people away from their evil. He said, if they have turned people away from their evil, then you would have profited the people. You would have done something that counts for all eternity. But now, when we encourage people backsliding, sinning, remaining in their evil, we do things that will condemn for all eternity. That same Jeremiah, verse 32, chapter 23, verse 32. Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams says the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err, to go astray, by their lies, and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit these people at all, says the Lord. Look at verse 14. And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you, and a perpetual shame, which shall not be forgotten, because they did things that will condemn them for all eternity. Everlasting reproach and perpetual shame, punishment coming upon them. And it says that punishment, that shame, that reproach shall never be forgotten. I pray God will save us from that. So I begin to live a life that comes for eternity. Spend your time on things that come for eternity. And spend your service, your energy, your skill, your ability, your gift. Make it something. Accounts for eternity so that the gifts you have, the skills you have, the ability you have, the talent you have, you don't use it for something that will condemn you for eternity, but to you use your gift to develop faith, not fear, to develop courage, not cowardice. And to make people take decisions that will lead them forward, making progress in the kingdom of God. Not things that will make them to reach to grace, to backslide. And to begin to think of things that will not profit their personal lives. But when we do things using our gift, our talent, our time, our ability, to do things that will make people backslide, the people see, we do things that condemn for all eternity. I pray God will give us wisdom. Did I hear you? Yeah. Uh, Second Peter, things that condemn for all eternity. Second Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 15. Second Peter chapter 2. We're looking at verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way. And I gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozo, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. You, you remember where we met Balaam the first time? Old Testament, long, long ago, in the time of Moses, when Israel was in the wilderness, and he counseled, he advised the king Balak of Moab to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. Long ago, thousand years have passed, two thousand years have passed, three thousand years have passed. And now, they still remember him in the, old, in the New Testament because that bad influence continued. And when, now, this man, Balaam, had already died. Where did he go? Heaven? Where? He went to hell. Can I tell you something? Every time, one thousand years, 
2,000 years, 3,000 years, after he died, after he went to hell. Every time another person, after thousands of years, followed the way of Balaam, the legacy of evil that he left behind, hell became hotter. And every time, every time, every time that Balaam was in hell and he's still there, and somebody else now says, look at this one, and doesn't know the age of Balaam, and somebody else follows that way of Balaam, something else happened in hell. The hell became hotter. And now Peter is telling us by the Spirit, there are people who are forsaking the right way. They have gone astray. It's a pity, it's unfortunate. And all they're doing is following the way of Balaam. Look at verse 16. But he was rebuked for his iniquity. And the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of that prophet. These are wells without water. And clouds that are carried with a tempest. To whom is reserved the darkness. How long? Forever. Blackness of darkness reserved forever. Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. Matters that condemn for all eternity. Let's be wise. Let's be wise. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? You gain all the appreciation of the world, exaltation of the world, all the awards that people can give you in the world, and you lose your soul. And then you make other people also to lose their soul. And then hell becomes hot, and every time somebody else follows that evil way that you lay down, hell becomes much, much hotter. Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. But I be few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things, sacrifice unto idols, and to commit fornication? Look at this. There's a church in the New Testament now. And the Lord Jesus told John to write to the church in Asia Minor. And he said, You write to the church in Pergamum and tell them, You're doing great, you're doing well, only days have against you. You have the people that they have not left the way of Balaam. And we're coming all the way from the book of Numbers. And he says, That man left, left a legacy that made people to continue evil, utter evil, utter evil. And every time the Lord here said, they are following the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam had his own disciples, his own teachers that perpetrated that evil doctrine. And the Lord is telling us that we should make sure that we follow after the way of the Lord so that we will not be condemned with these Balaams and all these bad people in Jesus' name. So that our lives will count for it.